Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here, and I have another Miniatures Monday video for you. Today we're going to be doing part two of my three-part series covering Painting Games Workshop's Champions of Death Blood Bowl miniatures. The first video in this series came out a couple weeks ago and was focusing on uh, prepping and priming these miniatures for painting. So we covered things like magnetizing the bases so the balls can attach to them, filling all the gaps around the slots in the bases, and priming them using a zenith uh, highlighting. I will link to that video in the description below so you can go review it if you haven't seen it, though it's not essential for watching this video. This video we're going to be covering all the linesmen that come in the box, so that's the four zombies and the four skeletons. And next week's video will be part three of the series where we cover all the positional models, so that will be your ghouls, your whites, and your mummies. I apologize for this video coming out a week later than expected. Unfortunately, the models took a little bit longer for me to paint, so I wasn't done until midweek, and I decided that instead of rushing out a uh, quickly put together video just to delay the video a week so I can do a proper job of it. But because I have all the models painted at this point, this means that the third video in the series should come out on time, since I don't have to wait for paint dr to dry to start working on it, I can just roll straight into editing that video once I'm done this one. Since we're painting a team here, there's a lot of duplication of uh, painting techniques that occurs, so all the cloth, armor, leather, things that indicate the team colors, even the basing is the same for all the models. So instead of having an entire walkthrough for the skeletons and then an entire walkthrough the zombies and basically repeating myself, what we're going to do is cover the specifics of each of the skeletons and zombies that are unique to them, and then we're going to do a combined section where we cover the teams, more of the team generic stuff. So this video is, we're going to cover the bone uh, paint job on the skeletons and we're going to do the flesh tone and guts on the zombies and then we're going to be working on uh, go, then we'll be going through a combined section where we'll cover things like the boots the yellow leather the black armor all of that stuff i will put down in the description below timestamps for the various sections so you can jump to them and review them if you're wanting to follow this guide while working on your own team i will also include uh, in the description below as i always do a list of the paints that i use so let's get into it the first set of models that we're going to be taking a look at is the skeletons. There's four skeletons in the box divided into two different types. The first type you can see here, we have the more standing up running style. There's also a more defensive blo line blocking style. For me, I actually use these running style skeletons as proxies for my third and fourth ghouls on my team, since I find that I don't use four skeletons, but having a couple spare ghoul models is convenient. If I'd been thinking originally when I put together this team, I would have used some green stuff and done some sculpting to make these uh, skeletons look more like ghouls. If you've seen some of my previous videos, specifically this Epicular Guard video, you'll have a pretty good idea about how I paint um, Skeleton Bone. I tend to do a slightly more yellowed, uh, browned look to give it more of the aged feel, as opposed to the more dead white style that you see as demonstrated by a Games Workshop and a lot of their box art. So we start off by basing out the model using a sand color, so something with a little bit of a yellow-brown to it to establish the tone that we're going to be going for. Specifically, I use Desert Sand for Reaper here, but there are some things like Zendora, I think it's Zendora Dust uh, from Citadel would be an acceptable uh, alternative here. After getting that base layer down, we'll move on to washing it with a, uh, with a light brown. Specifically, I use sepia wash from Vallejo here. Though Sierra from uh, sepia from Games Workshop or any other type of uh, sepia ink or wash would be uh, appropriate here. I would avoid using something like a burnt umber or an agrax earth shade here because that's going to make your uh, skeletons look a little bit dirty. Unless, of course, you're going for a very specific, they've just crawled out of the earth style. Once we've got that wash dry, we're going to dry brush it back up with our original uh, base color to reestablish some of the bright points and get rid of uh, where some of the washes where it definitely shouldn't be. And after that, we are going to finish off by doing some highlighting using an off-white. So this will be a bit of dry brushing and edge highlighting where appropriate. In this case, I specifically use Skeleton Bone by Reaper, though there are bone equivalent uh, paints from Citadel that you could use for this or from Vallejo, though I don't know their names offhand to suggest. So now we're going to move on to painting the flesh and guts on the zombie models. For the skin tone flesh area, I based it out using Desert Stone by Reaper, which is a slightly darker tone of their Desert Sand, so we're trying to get kind of a neutral beige color in there as our base tone. 
And then for the guts, I actually base them out using Heartthrob Pink from Reaper, which apparently is either not currently available from them or is yet to become available. I'm not I'm not actually sure where this paint came from. I think it may have just shown up randomly in an order from Reaper that I had. But any type of pink, pinky flesh tone like uh, Monster's Maw from Reaper would be sufficient for what we're doing here. I was planning on using Ethonian Camo Shade by Citadel as my uh, wash on these models. Unfortunately, I discovered I didn't actually have any of that kicking around. I had a different green, so I had to kind of make do with what I had. So I made a wash out of Camouflage Green by Reaper, which is kind of an olive tone uh, similar to Ethonian Camo Shade, and ran that over uh, both the flesh and the guts. Unfortunately, I didn't get the mix on the wash down exactly how I wanted, so it didn't sink in as much as I wanted to establish some shadow. So for the skin area, I later ran over a little bit of sepia wash by Vallejo to yellow it out a little bit to make it a little bit less green and to establish those shadows better. I didn't run that wash over the intestine gut area because I thought the yellow on pink would probably not turn out well. Once the washes were dried, I went in and dry brushed everything using Faded Khaki from Reaper. So this is a light ochre color. So this is shifting it back again from that like very green color that we got from the camouflage color to a little bit more yellow. So what we're trying to do is create a complex kind of sickly putrid color here. And this is kind of the end for the guts. So that's just a pink with an olive wash with the Faded Khaki over it to give it kind of a, a, a decaying intestine look to it. Whereas with the flesh, uh, I went in and put a final highlight layer using white flesh from Vallejo. This is to uh, give it more of a sense of that all this kind of putridness is sitting under bloodless skin. White flesh is a color that I like a lot from Vallejo. It comes from their Nocturna Pro line. Other pale skin tone colors uh, that don't have a lot of pink in them would work well here too. Since we're going to be painting using the standard order of working inside out after we have the flesh and bone tones done, we want to paint the next layer of clothing closest to them. So we're going to be painting the boots and the cloth that appears on like pants and shorts and loincloths on these characters. For my team, I decided to go with a color scheme with primary uh, color being gold or yellow and a secondary color of black. So I decided the boots and these, uh, and these cloth areas should be the secondary color. I decided to go with a matte black. There's definitely better ways to achieve this than what I ended up doing using things like washes to build up your color. This is an area I'm still working on. The first step I did was ignore my own advice and promptly based it out using a pure black from Reaper. I generally recommend against using a true black or true white for basing because it leaves you very little room to move up or down if you want to add shadows or highlights. Once that base layer was laid down, I dry brushed in some Stormy Gray to establish some highlights and give some wear to it. Stormy Gray is a neutral gray from Reaper. You could make this same tone by mixing together black and white or using any other similar darker gray neutral. To create some more higher highlights and also establish more of the true worn color, I uh, did highlighting using Dark Sea Gray from Vallejo. This is a slightly lighter uh, gray tone than what we, we had with the Stormy Gray. It's also slightly cool. I chose to go with a slightly cool tone here because I knew that the yellows that I'd be applying later are going to be slightly warm, so I wanted to balance out the figure to not read overly warm. Though if you go with a different color combination, especially if you go with something where the primary color for your team is going to be a cool color, you may choose to go with a slightly warm or neutral uh, gray at this point. The brown leather on all these models uh, shows the power of xenothal highlighting off really nicely. So for all these areas, all I did was take a bit of a hull red by Vallejo from their model airline, mix it with a bit of glaze medium, and then glaze that over uh, the leather areas and use the undershading to establish our lights and shadows. So this was probably the fastest and honestly nicest looking areas on the paint job. Continuing our pattern of working from the inside out, we are now going to do the kind of scarfy bits or shirts on some of the models and the dangling loincloth that some of them have on them. So this is going to be our first example of the primary color, our yellow gold. In this specific example, we're going to be going with a matte yellow since we're working on cloth. Yellow is kind of a difficult color to work with at times because of the fact it doesn't have good coverage. So I recommend using something like a light gray or a white uh, glaze on your a primer that you're going to be painting over to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to lay down too many layers of yellow. Of course, I promptly ignored this while painting this, so I ended up having to put down three or four layers to get a nice saturation on the base layer. For the base layer, we painted Candlelight Yellow by Reaper. 
Then we created a wash using Lantern Yellow by Reaper. This is a slightly orange tinged uh, yellow, so we wanted to make it a little bit warmer uh, than you may naturally get. I decided not to use something like a sepia wash here because though that would have established really strong shadows, I think it would have ended up creating a kind of dirty look and I want to create a, a feel for the team that the equipment provided by the team is well kept and well maintained. The players themselves may not be, but at least they, there's some pride from the equipment maintenance crew. After the wash was dried, uh, we uh, dry brushed in that candlelit yellow again to reestablish the highlights. And then I finished it off by doing some dry brushing and edge highlighting uh, uh, with pale saffron to really push up the contrast a little bit more. Overall, I'm actually quite happy with how the yellow came out on these guys. Now that we have the clothing and flesh painted on these models, it's time to move on to the actual armor slash Blood Bowl equipment. Because I'm going with yellow and gold as my colors, I decided to make the equipment be predominantly black with some gold accents. So helmets, shoulder pads, hip guards, forearm guards, all these things got based out using adamantium black from Reaper, which is a black metallic paint. Even for a metallic paint, I found this to be super shiny, so I actually ended up running a wash of Nuln Oil, which is a Citadel shade over it, to knock out some of that shine and darken some of the pits and recesses on the metal a little bit. Once that dried, I dry brushed it with Shadowed Steel from Reaper. This brightened it up a little bit and gave it kind of a more of a worn look to it and brought out some of the detail. And finally, I went in and did some edge highlighting using Blade Steel to really pull out some of the fine details. Some places it sparked out really nicely, some places it didn't work out as well. That Blade Steel color is also the gray metal color I use throughout the model for things like the hand spikes and nails and such that appear on various things, often washed with a little bit of nylon oil just to give it a bit of detail. The other metallic color that we see on these models is the gold metallic color that appears on the little wings that appear on the boots, the skull on, as a belt buckle on some of the models, and on the helmets as the center stripe and spike. This gold metallic color is achieved by first basing it using Dragon Gold from Reaper then applying a sepia wash from Vallejo. Dry brushing it back up using Dragon Gold again, and then finally doing some uh, highlighting using New Gold from Reaper. Now that we're done painting our models, we need to base them so we can bring them together a bit more thematically with each other. I chose to do a relatively simple straight ahead basing here because I didn't feel like trying to build up a large structured thing that would draw attention away from the models and potentially get in the way of play by preventing uh, locking in the ball with the magnet later. The initial base layer is just Astro Granite, which is a texture paste from Citadel. It's a little bit gritty and is a slightly cool gray color. Once this had set, I washed it with Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, though you could use any type of umber uh, colored wash to achieve this. An alternative would have been to use something like a black wash or null oil if you wanted to get something without the brown tones to it. Finally, once the wash was uh, dried, I hit it with uh, a dry brush of Desert Sand uh, the, to bring out the highlights and give it a little bit more detail. Desert Sand, of course, being what we used for the bone earlier and is kind of a nice uh, brownie beige and near white, so it doesn't introduce an, any new colors to our palette. Now that I've shown you the different stages of painting these models, I'm going to do a little showcase of an example of each of the four different model types that we covered today. There was some touch-up work done on these models between probably the last time you saw them in the video and now, just a little bit like cleaning up overages and things like that. Though I haven't yet varnished any of these models because it's been friggin' cold here for the last few days, so I haven't been wanting to be out in the garage using my airbrush. I plan on varnishing them with a matte or dead matte varnish uh, before I have to play with them in the league so they don't get scuffed up. And you may notice that three of these uh, models have black rimmed bases. This is just to indicate that they're basic linesmen. The one running skeleton design has a yellow rimmed base uh, because that's what I'm also using for my ghouls and they're going to be used as proxies for my ghouls. I kind of wish I had chosen something other than yellow to indicate my ghouls because, uh, because getting that paint to actually cover nicely was quite difficult. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I'm going to be doing a third video in this series in which we cover all the positional players. That should be coming out next week on Monday. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know anyone that might be interested in some of the techniques or the paint schemes shown here, please share it with them because that helps out the channel a great deal. I'll see you in the next one.